Hey everybody, I am bringing y'all another heater video, RV heater video. Excellent for tiny homes, things like that. So if you salvage one or you have one needing repair, I'm about to show you all the common issues. Let me get my cup down there. All the common issues and basic fixes that you can do on an RV heater that the technicians don't want you to know. And we're going to give you some ideas on it. Um, and those guys who were my constant viewers, Ida May. This is my little border calling McNabb, Ida May. She's getting so big. She's almost as big as Emma now. She's a little over six months. Um, that is for my, I have plenty of people who love my border collies. Now, this here is a standard 16,000 BTU camper heater, RV heater. Now, this doesn't change much. This is an Atwood, also sold as Suburbans and other other product names under them. Uh, there's even a Coleman model similar. But I'm gonna show you some things that are involved on these. So let me get this one shut down. This is a basic positive to switch right there. So the white wire is the positive to switch. That's what your, your uh, let me let it go with the cool down cycle here. Still had its flame on. So I'll run that. And so you have positive to switch on here, which means that you go from here through your thermostat, very light load to a switch, which is that wire there. Okay, so as it runs the slow cool down cycle on this thing, I'll show you why. Now the cool down cycle is operated when you pull power away from one of these. This is a fan run delay relay. And I'll show you more about it here in just a second. And I'll show, I'm going to show you. So you, people ask me all the time, I've got a heater, it blows cold air, it'll come on, nothing will happen. I'm not getting any gas to it or anything like that. I'm going to show you why. Um, numerous different things that are going to go on with these heaters. Most of the time, it's not the board. A lot of people think, oh wow, I need the board. Well, look below the video, I'll put you the parts list of one of these boards that will pretty much run anything. I'll put it down there at the bottom. So we're going to get into this one. This is kind of the common goofy that they use to put these together. I've got a Phillips up here, factory. I've got a Phillips here. I've got a 5 16 here and a quarter there. So we'll get all these pieces loose and we'll get you in there inside the components. And I'm hoping that fan is not so loud here. It should shut off here in just a second. I can feel the air getting much cooler. So these run a cool down cycle so that you salvage all the excess heat that's in your foot deep in there. You see that? That's your heat exchanger right there. So all the excess that's coming through there, it burns it completely out. Now here's the board on those heaters. They're pretty simple. They have two screws. You have one right here behind the label. You can feel it. Put your finger on it, you can feel it. It's right there. And you can just put a Phillips screwdriver through and there's the other one there to remove the board. So you'll see that one right there. Pretty common. Now, Dinosaur makes a board, three wire, just like this. And if it's not three wire, it'll have terminals. And it's really simple. It'll just show you ground, and then it'll, it'll say multifunction, which is the MF or whatever. But you just connect power, switch, and ground to them, and there you go. Now, the big thing about these heaters that goes wrong, all right, your igniter that's up in here is rarely to go wrong. Your um, over temp switch, that's this one right back here. It's an over temp switch. Now, it's just a click disc or a thermostatic click disc. Let me show you what one is right quick. I've got a whole bunch of, pardon my junk here. I usually don't really prep well for these things. So, here we go. It's just one of these. Now, it's set for, I believe, uh, 225 Celsius, which would be, um, or 125, 125 Celsius. So, it, like this right here, this is a standard 120. Now, it would work the same way without this operating. So, when it's, when it's cold, it's making contact. When it reaches that temperature, it'll click and break contact. When it breaks contact, it breaks contact to your gas supply. Now, when those fail, because RVs sit a lot, moisture does get inside of these, you'll see that that is just a crimped, pressed fitting. See it? It's just, that's all they are. Moisture will get inside, it really will, and then these just don't work. So you get out there and I fire up my RV heater, and it's got no gas. I can't even try to light it with a lighter. It just, nothing's coming through. There's no gas going through, 
And of course, most of these are pilotless, so I can't get it to fire up. I hear it clicking, it won't fire up. The clicking is that relay right there. So I hear all that going on, nothing happens. Well, if power is not passing through this one right here, let me get it, I'll turn that light on so y'all can see here. All right, so this one right back there, you see it's the same thing. Here we go, same thing, okay? Right there. It's just touching against the cabinet and that right there with two square head screws, number one square head screws, that part, you can jump the wires between that you can pull the plug off and you can put a pin between it and then try again and if it fires up you're not hurting anything if it fires up you know to replace the over temp the over temp is designed you know you have an rv and you look up inside of here and you see wasp's nest look at this that's been cleaned out it was full so you see that and this thing will not be able to evacuate its heat it'll over temp it'll kill the gas but the fan will still run so your heater comes on it blows cold nothing happens no gas no nothing First thing is right there, okay? Now, second heater comes on, fires and stops, fires and stops, fires and stops. Well, off over here on this side, internally, you see that red wire running inside right there? Right, let's see, I put my finger on it right there. That red wire goes to a fan leaf switch. So let me grab one of those right quick. If I have to edit some of this out while I'm walking around goofy, I'll do that. Um, so okay, there we go. Common leaf switch. I pulled something out kind of cool for this next video. Y'all stay tuned. I'm going to do a cool video on something you'll see. Subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot of these. All right, so these are your common leaf switches. Let me open them up right quick. All right, so. You'll see these are pretty common. Holes right there, and you can tap them and use anything you want, but it's a really tiny screw that goes in there. And you will take and solder. This is this is a just like the surface of a uh, NICAD battery or a lithium battery where you can solder to it. You'll solder a little tab um, the size, or you'll take the tab off the one that's in here, and you'll use a leaf switch. So the fan blows, and it pushes on that switch. That means that the burner can come on. That's your secondary right here. That means the burner can come on because the fan is turning to put air mix into the fuel, into your burner, and exhausting the exhaust. So it's pushing the exhaust out. That's what this blower over here is doing. This is a little squirrel cage, and its combustion air goes in through there. All right, so if that fails, you'll get a similar effect where you can actually probably tap on the heater, and you'll hear it fire up and then shut off. That is what you'll expect to find is the leaf switch. Now you can go in there and put your model in, your serial number of it and all that, and you'll find the part. You just put on their blower switch or blower fan switch, and there it is. Now they come in different sizes, lengths, and pressure, so the spring load will be different. These here are very light, and they're made for any, fan, any of them, and all I gotta do is just kinda bend that a little to make it work on any of them. All right, so everything I'm gonna work with, I'll put a link down there, and you'll understand. Now, this, the other thing is the fan run delay relay. And what this does is pretty simple. It has a metallic switch inside that heats up. So power comes in. You turn on the switch by connecting over here. You connect your thermostat wire. And what that does, there's your thermostat wire. It energizes that in there and it slowly heats up. And the metal expands and pop makes contact. Now it sends the power right here through this switch to activate the board and turn everything else on. So you, you see that wire goes here, goes there. Get a better picture here. And you see how it goes all together. There's, there's the wires running together and they come from over here. So what that does is it allows your board to become active. And so your blower will come on immediately um, that's the first thing that features. The blower causes the leaf switch to kick on. That, in turn, sends all of that information back to this board. Your board then says, okay, and your power is cleared by that switch back there. That's your over temp. So if it's clear to go through, to pass through there, in other words, it's not pulled away and deactivated. If it's clear, 
then the burner fires up. So the basics are is that you have one, over temp switch, two, a fan run delay relay. Now, here is the thing. These are 50 bucks if you can find them, 50 bucks. This, I'm gonna put a link down here, is the same thing. Now, a lot of people don't think so, and it is 24 volt, and you're like, well, like my heater's 12 volts. Well, DC amperage don't give a damn. So what it's gonna be is this is a 34 second fan delay, and it'll actually activate in 25 seconds. It'll shorten it because of the amps of the DC 12 volt, and it does all the same. So this one here, I can power it up, and then it's going to have a 18 second delay before it switches and starts running everything. So it'll fire, your motor will come on, your leaf switch will say okay, back here your fan switch, fan running switch, and then everything else will start running. But when this one fails, you get nothing. You can turn the power on, you can turn on the, it doesn't matter, you'll get nothing. And it's really simple. This is the switch right here. And this is where you put your positive and your negative. And it's just like this. So you'll see the white wires in here are your positive. These are your negatives. And this is your switch right here, these two wires here. So pretty common. This is a standard Suburban part. Yes, I know it's an Atwood, but that's what it is. Standard Suburban run delay relay. And this part here would simply wire in either, and it doesn't matter, it don't care. You can put it this way or that way, it don't matter. You'll put your white wires on here on the bottom. You'll put your black wires, sorry, you'll put your two black wires, you see them right here? You'll put them on this side, and then it doesn't matter here either. You'll put that wire on one of these, and this lower wire here on one of these. And you'll mount that switch however you want to. Okay, and it's pretty simple. You see the little tab? You can find or drill you a hole, and you put that little tab in the hole, and then put you a screw in right there. So that is a run delay relay. It's really simple. Most furnaces um, that are over 10 years old, this is a common fail. There's guys on eBay selling these things for 30 bucks, and here's the facts. I'll send you to a link that you can get them for about 15 or less. So look below the video, 15 or less. That switch right there, the only thing you need is the same identical switch, and it's it's literally called a thermal, a bimetal thermal disc. So you want one that is literally the temperature of about 200 degrees, 250, sorry, 250 Fahrenheit. So you want one that's 250 Fahrenheit, 125 Celsius, and you will put that switch just like it's mounted right there, same way. And it has to be a normally closed, so in other words, it opens on heat. Too much heat, it'll open, kill the power. That's the same thing there. Everything else that's in here is simple. I suggest you do try to find the factory switch for your furnace if it, if it fails that away. But there's your three trouble items. One, two, and there we go, three. 95% of furnaces that fail before you start going crazy about your board that they want 100 bucks for, there's your three subjects right there that are about, I don't know, $20, 22 something like that. So this is simple. It's easy to do. Most furnaces don't look like this one, I agree, but their, their principle is the same. And some of them will have this switch mounted back in the back. Um, let's see here. I have an old furnace that we had in the shop here. You see it? So let me just get into it. And you see all this stuff here? There's the ignition. The switch for it is way back there. I don't know if you can see it on the other side of the board. So you do have to take things apart. And then the over temp switch is one of these. But principle is the same. And this whole thing, probably the time of the year to get it fired up, keep the shop warm. So I just let it run out the front, out the sides, and let the exhaust go in here because I've got that tens of thousands of cubic feet of space. All right, so guys, I hope that answers your heater questions. Um, when it comes to this board failing, when it does, before you freak out and go to buy another one, you see that relay right there? 
you can take that relay off and you can replace it with any relay that is 12 volt. That's the 90% of the time, that's what fails. That is 12 volt. And sometimes you will have this diode here on these boards. Not that one over there, but this diode. That's the one that feeds the power to that to kick this. So sometimes you'll watch, it'll be burnt. And that is a very, very basic standard diode. Replace it with any one of them, but it's simple to do. You just leave it long and put it in there. But that's right there. That's a, that's a big one. That little relay is a piece of crap. So, all right, guys, hope that helps. Didn't want to ramble about it, but I get probably, uh, this time of year, I probably get 30 to 40 people a day asking me what is what and why is it there and what does it do. And I just want to make sure my viewers know what it is. All right, guys, y'all be good.